I woke up this morning really wanting a change and call it the seasons changing or maybe it's just because I'm about to be another year older in a few weeks, but I realized that it was time for me to evolve. I'm really happy and proud of the person that I've grown into, but I also see room for growth and change and the opportunity to become a better version of myself. I am a work in progress and I've laid out just a few steps that I'm personally going to take to reinvent and transform my life. And I hope they serve as some inspiration for you if you're feeling like you're in a similar place. Something I actually did just a few weeks ago, which is just simply envisioning the highest, best version of myself. Just visualization in general serves as such a powerful motivational tool for becoming the best version of you. It gives you something to strive for, to aim a target at. Really ask yourself, what does that best version of you do on a daily basis? Are they the kind of person that wakes up early and goes to the gym? Are they someone that writes 10 pages of progress towards their novel every single day? Do they balance and budget their finances on a regular schedule? What do they wear? How do they spend their evenings? What do they allocate towards their free time? And like I said, I recently did this exercise just a couple of weeks ago, and it was just such a clear way for me to see gaps in between where I am now and where I want to be. A perfect example is I think the best and highest version of myself actually puts herself together every single morning. Because I've had such a habit of exercising at night, I've really realize that I'm just wearing my leggings, my sweatpants until the day ends, and I never really have that opportunity to get ready. So maybe just that concept alone is going to shift my actions into becoming a morning workout person and then spend my mornings getting ready, pampering myself, actually putting on makeup instead of a ball cap. Whenever you see your ideal self in your mind's eye, it's much more likely that you're going to stay committed to progress and towards the trajectory of becoming that person. So this whole visualization process, it's not just about wishful thinking. It's a proactive step towards personal growth, towards personal improvement. Envisioning your highest self really does give you that clear sense of direction and purpose. It helps you get clear on your values, where you need to make changes. It really is like an exercise of mapping out where you are and where you want to be and then filling in the gaps. So get out that piece of paper or maybe your notes app, maybe a Pinterest board, truly whatever works for you to complete this exercise and visualize your highest self, write it down and answer those questions about what they do on a daily basis. Truly get specific on what that future version of you does and then you can work backwards into implementing those things. In order to become the best version of yourself, you cannot skip doing the inner work whenever it comes to emotional and mental health. Trust me, I've tried. I've tried ignoring my mental and emotional emotional health, pushing down past traumas, ignoring negative thought patterns or justifying them in some way. But it just doesn't work that way if you want to make leaps and bounds in becoming the best version of you. Talk therapy has been instrumental for my personal growth. Without working and talking with my therapist, I never would have realized that one of my biggest cognitive distortions is polarization or the concept of all or nothing thinking. And more importantly, how do I achieve a more balanced life approach? Without even realizing it, there could be something that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals. Regardless, if you want to address a clinical clinical mental diagnosis like depression or anxiety, or if you are just a human being dealing with everyday life, therapy can give you those tools to approach your life in a very different way to reinvent yourself. Today's sponsor, BetterHelp, has the mission to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. Take it from me, finding a therapist can be really hard, whether it be due to limited options in your area or just finding the right match. If you're not vibing with your therapist, which has happened to me many, many times, it's almost like dating. You don't have to stress about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. I personally see my therapist weekly using BetterHelp. Shout out to Jack. He's really helped me a lot reframe a lot of my negative thinking. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist by using my link betterhelp.com slash Katie Calloway, or it'll be in the description box as well. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. So that way you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Doing the inner work like I was talking about 
about can oftentimes be supported by a therapist if you don't know how to get started. Now, once you have a clear image of the person that you want to become, once you have started doing the inner work to find the blocks, it's time to start showing up as that dream person you want to become. And unfortunately, I can't give you an exact blueprint of what showing up means in your exact case, but I can share some things that have helped me or people that I know in this instance. First, becoming your best self is a lifelong process with no finish line that is both good news and bad news, but execution is the name of the game here. You can't sit around and desire change but take no action and then get upset when no results come to fruition. You need to do more than just want change, you have to create change. And let me just say, I am very much preaching to myself with this one as well. I am in the trenches with y'all too. Historically, what I've noticed is you'll start showing up as that elevated version of yourself when you stick to just one of those daily habits to start with. Just pick one, pick that one daily change and master that first before moving to the next. If you try and do all of the things all at once, it's not sustainable. It's a recipe for burnout, for failure, for disappointment. Just pick one practice and work really, really hard at it. And when it becomes just like muscle memory, then move on to the next. But you cannot become this best version of you that you visualized earlier if you don't actually show up and put in the effort. Now let's talk about decluttering. Go get an extra large garbage bag and go and fill it up. Go get that extra large garbage bag and fill it up with anything that you do not use anymore, that does not serve any purpose in your life, anything that doesn't fit, something that triggers a painful memory. Make sure that is not in your space any longer. Donate it, get rid of it. If it doesn't serve you, it doesn't deserve to be in your space. But this doesn't just apply to things, it applies to people. Take your cell phone or your computer and go unfollow anyone or any account that makes you feel anything less than inspired or empowered. Also, stop digitally checking in on friends you had falling outs with or exes. Anyone who is not an active part of your life, you are just wasting your emotional energy, which we'll talk about in a second. Those people, they're gonna keep going on without you. Trust me, the unfollow button is your best friend, and if you're not ready to do that, the mute button is a very close second. Also, can I just say, it is totally okay and encouraged to to declutter, in a sense, your goals and your aspirations. There may be objectives that you've just been clinging onto for years without making any progress, and it's okay to let some of those things go if they're not going to serve you. Focus on what truly matters to you now in the present, in the year 2023, or whenever you're watching this, but prioritize those goals that align with your current life values, and you're gonna see so much more progress and motivation. Like I said, we've gotta to talk to about protecting your energy. One of the foremost things that you can do for your life, for the people in your life, essentially everyone around you, is to first and foremost protect your energy first. One example that comes to mind, stop engaging in arguments with people, whether it be online or in person, where you know that the other person's objective is just to be right and not understanding. Also, stop engaging in arguments in your head, especially if the situation is A, either made up, or B, something that happened a really, really long time ago. The most precious and important thing that you have in your life is your energy, so protect it fiercely. It's not your time that is limited, it's your energy that's limited. What you give it to each day is what you're going to create more and more of in your life. So if you're giving your energy to toxic people or situations, that's gonna breed more toxic people and situations. But if you're giving your energy to your career pursuits or the people in your life that make you feel important and loved and empowered and beautiful and wonderful, then you're gonna create more of that in your life. What you give your energy to, that is what defines your entire existence. Again, look at that highest version of yourself that you visualized and ask, where do they give their energy? And finally, it's uh, time to drop that ego. Again, very much talking to myself here. You are still flawed and you will always be flawed and that's okay. That doesn't mean that you can't be a work in progress, just progress in smaller increments. Try to drink just half a cup of water today or walk for 10 minutes outside. Go to sleep 10 or 15 minutes earlier if that's all you can manage. Slowly adjust to those new norms, build that momentum. And again, this is something I have always battled with because I do have that polarized thinking, that all or nothing mentality. I'm either in the gym seven days a week working out for hours or I'm eating Taco Bell and drinking wine. So instead of just trying to manically make yourself feel happy all of the time, it's okay to accept that you are a work 
in progress. You are going to have bad days when tough things happen, when grief or loss occur, or even just when you're feeling unsure about yourself. And this isn't because you are broken or anything's wrong with you. It's because you're functioning exactly the way that you're supposed to be. So I figured I would end this video just talking through some of the things that I am going to implement over the next several weeks to try and start becoming that best version of me. One of which I touched on is just kind of putting myself together each day. I mean, I work remote, no one sees me, and if they do, it's on camera through a screen. So usually I'm in sweatpants or leggings or a sweatshirt. And while all of that's fine and good, I just have noticed a huge confidence boost whenever I do even just like the bare minimum of pampering or makeup or just putting myself together in some way. And what coincides with that would be doing exercise in the morning so that way I can get out of those leggings and into something a little bit more quickly. This is also going to support the goal I have of not skipping exercise days. I have been putting a lot more on my plate. So sometimes when I would exercise at like 5 p.m., I'm actually working through that at this point. And I don't want to skip anymore. So kind of switching my morning routine to have exercise in it is going to be very different for me. And I will, I'm sure, take you guys along with me for that journey. But it's going to take out the guesswork of when I make it happen. And then of course, taking care of my mental and emotional health has been something that has helped me so, so much over the last few months. So continuing with that on a weekly basis, making it a priority, that is also going to be incredibly helpful. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Again, it was kind of like a letter to myself. A lot of these videos that I make are almost benchmarks for my own accountability, but that doesn't mean that I don't think it could at least be valuable to share with you guys. And hopefully some of it inspired you in some capacity. I'm really excited to see what this next season brings for me. I, I am very curious as well, but very excited to start taking those very incremental small steps like I mentioned earlier. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and I will see you all next week. 